who are tuning in live to the Mountaineer Hockey Network, and we proudly present the Mountaineer Puck Drop Preview. I'm Camden Bellotti, the Director of Broadcasting and also the Play-by-Play Broadcaster, and today we have our first guest on the show, Coach Rue. How you doing? I'm well, man. How are you so? I'm doing well. So uh, for the parents at home that don't maybe not know you, uh, you are the Division Three head coach. Uh, why don't you explain a little bit how you got into that and um, what you do for the team? So uh, this is my third season here uh, when we added the D3 team two years ago. Um, I was lucky enough to get uh, the invitation to to join on here. Um, so I have been coaching well over a decade now. Um, I started coaching when I was in high school, uh, coached my little brother's team growing up, um, coached elementary school, worked my way up through middle school, uh, coached some JV, uh, head coached uh, varsity team for a couple of years. And then uh, the COVID year, I actually took a year off which opened the door for me to take this job when we had enough guys at, at tryouts two years ago now uh, to add the division three team. And um, I've been lucky enough to stay on since. Yeah. So let's just jump right into it. I know you're a busy man. Uh, so last Saturday, we, you guys faced off against case Western as shown on the Mountaineer hockey network. It was, a, some could say a disappointing five to two loss. It's also the start of a four game losing streak as well. So can you provide an overall assessment of the team's performance and, you know, the matchup against Case Western? So uh, I, I definitely would say that the Case Western game was the most frustrating of these four conference losses. Um, you know, we, not that I put a whole lot of stock into it when I start, you know, scheduling as far as, um, you know, who we pick when we kind of get the dates on the schedule. And, um, but uh, we definitely kind of put ourselves against a little bit of a gauntlet to start. Um, I mean, we played Akron, who was one of the better teams last year, definitely very fast. Um, we played Kent, who won the regular season last year. Uh, and we played St. Vincent, who got better all last year and ended up losing in the finals, uh, in the playoff finals last year to Cal. Um, so we we definitely put ourselves in a position where it was a little bit of an uphill battle to start. Um, given the turnover from last season and the amount of freshmen we have, maybe not the best way to to start out. But um, you know, then against Case, no disrespect to them, it's still a very good hockey team. But I think they were the you know most reasonable of those foes. We came out a little sloppy. Um, definitely not enough shots. We didn't test their goaltender very much, uh, and not nearly aggressive enough, especially in our own end. All right. So from that, were there any standout individual performances or standout moments that, you know, stood out to you despite, you know, the loss to Case Western? Looking at it through a pretty positive lens, there was definitely, um, you know, some some periods of play that we were pretty happy with. Um, we implemented some systems that, you know, to a better extent than we have still obviously not up to standard, but, you know, moving in the, in the right direction. I thought, uh, we made the move from Hayden Snyder at center to Hayden Snyder on the wing with uh, James Bailey on the other wing and Drew Allen down the middle. I thought those three was, you know, had a pretty good night. I really like the combination of the three. Uh, moving Hayden to the wing allows him to, you know, play a little freer in the neutral zone. He doesn't have as much responsibility defensively. And I think that definitely lends to his skill set where, you know, it's going to allow him to play a little freer than what we need and expect from the centerman. And then from that, how do you assess the team's morale and mindset after the loss? You know, four game losing streaks can be a little, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it can be really tough. And, uh, you know, that is where, you know, keeping your focus on, the process and not so much the result is important. And that's a lot easier said than done. Um, you know, you got a lot of personalities in the room. You got guys that are in and out of the lineup, guys that have been out of the lineup for a few of these, if not all of these conference games. So, you know, you definitely, that's, that's the tricky part is keeping the puzzle pieces together in the right way and making sure the guys, you know, are aware. One big thing I think is the guys that are in and out of the lineup or the guys that are out of the lineup, I try to make sure I communicate with. I want to make sure those guys know that, you know, myself and my assistant coach Jackie uh, are making sure that those guys feel seen. They know the progress that, you know, we're seeing. And so they don't feel like they're on the outside looking in. Um, that goes for the guys out of the lineup. The guys in the lineup, you know, it's very easy to get frustrated 
um, you know, this team wants to be successful. And we've got some returning guys that are hungry. They're hungry. I mean, we came on in the second half of the year last year, and and we played some good hockey for spurts last year against some really good hockey teams. We just couldn't get full 60-minute efforts. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, definitely some turnover. So, you know, especially with the freshmen, they've got to understand that it's a slow burn sometimes. I mean, a lot of those guys are coming from playing in high school and, you know, some travel hockey. They definitely need to – you know, get used to the pace and things like that. So it is tough, but I think you just got to try to do your best to make sure those guys are focusing on building on the good things that we are doing and, you know, correcting the other stuff while not giving up any ground. You know, you don't want one step forward, two steps back. You need to go the other way. All right. So let's move into this weekend. You are the only home team shown on Mountaineer Hockey Network this week. Uh, We have a matchup against Pitt Johnstown and the Kent State comes back to finish off that series. Um, so two highly, you know, fought teams here, um, in the face of adversity, how do you maintain the team's morale and motivation and how do you keep players focused on turning it around? Uh, like I said, that, that last one, you know, we really just have to focus on, you know, taking baby steps, moving in the right direction all the time. I tell the guys, you know, one thing that's tough as hockey players is, it's not like a baseball diamond where you can you know drive down the street and get some reps in. You know, we're only together when we when we have our ice time. So we've got to make sure that whether it's practice or a team meeting or, you know, a video session, we're getting better all the time. We've got to make sure even if it's just a little bit, it's always steps in the right direction. So I think that's a big piece of it. And, you know, you somewhat touched on the schedule a little bit. Um, having the two games in less than 24 hours, uh, what strategies do you use when you have – back-to-back games in less than 24 hours for recovery? And how do you prepare the team for back-to-back games when it's two strong opponents, especially Kent State? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a little tough. I think what we'll probably do this weekend, um, you know, I don't, I don't like to commit to anything lineup-wise until we're a little closer. You never know what kind of injuries could pop up or, you know, what kind of circumstances you've got. But we usually try to work some guys in. You know, we'll probably have a little different lineup on uh, – you know, on Friday, then we'll have on Saturday afternoon. Uh, another thing is we'll probably have a different starting goaltender. Uh, you know, on those quick turnarounds, I like to spread those games out a little bit for those guys. And then, um, you know, some of the silly, you know, seems like silly little stuff is, you know, just sleep, hydration, getting the right, you know, food in you. And and those guys, these guys are pretty serious. They they do, you know, they they take it seriously and they know their body. They they usually are pretty responsible about, you know, getting making sure they've got the right fuel. And I'm going to throw a little curveball in before we get to the last question. You're not yeah. ready for this one. Uh, what are you expecting this weekend from the team? So I I expect just some more progress. I mean, yes, you'd like to you know slow down the slide here. But like I said, in my opinion, we lost to three of the best teams in the conference, uh, two of those on the road, being Akron and Kent in Ohio. Um, you know, we lost to Case. And like I said, I'm not disrespecting Case. I just don't think they're in the same caliber as maybe those other three or, you know, at least a couple of those other three. Um, so I'm expecting another step in the right direction. I think this team is, you know, really talented. I think we're deeper than we've been in either of the first two seasons I've been here. Um, I think we've got some talent that we haven't seen you know, in those first two years. And that's no disrespect to the guys that were here at that point either, because, you know, we've lost a lot of guys that I would have loved to have kept around. But um, I think that if we can get one out of the way, get a little confidence under our belt, I think this team's really going to pop off. You know, I think we're we're a little bit closer than the scoreboard in the last few uh, definitely depicts. And, and I'm excited to, to get back to work. You know, we had practice this morning and excited to get back to work Thursday night and hopefully – you know, get that first win under us on Friday and get rolling. And finally, uh, as we know, you're two and four on the season. So on the overall season goals, how significant are these two games? I mean, obviously it's still early in the season, but what impact could winning these games have on the team's trajectory? Um, One thing that's really nice about College Hockey East, uh, you know, I think it was the case last season to a certain extent, but especially this year, I think that, the really fun thing is that you get to the rink any night. There's not a night where you're going to be, you know, a punching bag and there's not a night where you're going to have any easy, you know, wins either. So I think that's really fun. Um, It just makes it 
a, a genuine challenge for the guys and for myself going into every weekend. You know, it, it's it's going to be a, a you know pretty serious dogfight to to get points in this conference, and I definitely look at that as a positive for our group for college hockey in the area. Um, you know, I'm excited about that. So, you know, that being said, can't let yourself get buried too far. Um, you know, those out of those four losses, like I said, you know, looking at those first three, I would have liked, I, I would have really liked to have been at least one and two in those first three. I uh, definitely would have liked to have had the case win, but either way, you know, Oh, and four is not ideal. So I think that getting yourself in a position where, you know, you're accelerating those steps in the right direction because you can take those small victories for so long, but once you're so far down in the standings, they're, they're, it's not going to work anymore. So, you know, I'm not, I don't think myself or our group are ready to hit the panic button yet, but you can't let own oh, four turn into oh, and six. And you definitely can't let own oh, six turn into oh, and eight because, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to go undefeated in the second half here. So we've got to make sure that, you know, we're taking care of business and starting to put some points on the board and get some points in, in, in our pocket for, you know, the long stretch coming out of the you know holiday break and everything. All right. And that'll pretty much wrap it up here. So next week we're planning on having a Brownie coach Brown come on. I know he was a little uh, heartbroken when he found out that he wasn't going to be first. Um, but so make sure you tune in on Mountaineer Hockey Network. Our first game is Pitch Johnstown. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it's an 830 puck drop. 830 start. That's correct. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. This was the Mountaineer Puck Drop Preview. And make sure you hit that subscribe button.